There we go. And again, welcome everybody. We are so glad you could join us today for uh, another one of our back to school webinars. Uh, this time we have how to personalize and build your own assignments on Code HS. This is really one of my favorite topics. I think it's one of Lindsay's favorite topics. I think we all really love this topic. And we are very excited to be here with you today. My name's Lori and I'm a PD specialist here at Code HS. And I'm joined by Lindsay. She's also a PD specialist here at Code HS. And she's Lindsay is going to be behind the scenes answering some questions for us and uh, letting me know if I uh, forget something important too. So we are very excited again to be here with you today and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we have a link for you. If you'd like it now, you can absolutely access our slides right now. You can either access the slides from the QR code that you see on the screen. So we'll leave this here for just a second. If you need to grab your phone uh, to take uh, grab that QR code real quick, or you can always browse to codehs.com slash build your own slides. And that will also take you out to our slide deck codehs.com slash build dash your dash own dash slides. I should say it correctly if I'm going to just shout it out, right? All right. And during our workshop today, we really are going to be focusing in on just how do we create and bring in our own content and how do we pull in material from CodeHS? You are going to love what we have to share with you. This is one of the most powerful features of the entire CodeHS platform. All right, so since this is a webinar today, it's gonna look a little bit different from some of the uh, uh, other workshops that you might've attended with CodeHS. This one has a little different feel. Uh, you won't be able to chat, I believe, but you will be able to actually uh, ask any questions in the Q&A. And so if you look down toward the bottom of your Zoom window, you should see that little Q&A icon. Go ahead and click on that and you can ask away with any questions you might have there. And uh, I'm gonna try to keep an eye on that, but Lindsay is going to be keeping a much closer eye on that. So she'll be answering any questions in the background. And Lindsay, if you see anything there that we should answer live, uh, make sure that I don't miss those, okay? Perfect. All right. So if we do have anybody joining us today who does not have a CodeHS account, um, we would love for you to head out to CodeHS.com slash sign up. Lindsay just tossed that link into chat for you all. Um, this will just take a moment. If you've never created an educator account with CodeHS, it's completely free. Um, it's uh, excellent. So if you don't have one, make sure you sign up for one. Um, and uh, it just takes a couple of seconds to go ahead and do that. And if you'd care to do that later, that's absolutely fine too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the content of our webinar today. So we wanna talk about how we're gonna customize and really customize our courses and our lessons with CodeHS. And like I was saying before, this is a really powerful component of the platform and something that we really want to make sure our teachers understand can be used by both pro and free teachers. There's a few uh, components of this that will be for pro teachers, but there are so many ways that any teacher, whether you're free or pro, can actually customize your own courses, your own lessons, and everything. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to be uh, actually, before I move to that next page, uh, we're actually going to be focusing on the assignments page today, and I'll take you all out to show you where that is in just a moment. Um, if you're familiar with CodeHS, you've probably seen that before, but know that that is where we're going to focus on. And as we get started, I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at in this first section. We're going to start pretty basic with some of the basic customizations that you can do. I'm going to show you how to reorder modules and remove some content. And then we're going to get into some other pieces from there. So I'm going to jump out from the slides and head out to a section. So I've entered one of my sections. I chose a demo section so I can play with this. You can see all of my demo kids here. And in order to start accessing um, all of those 
cool customization tools, I want to go to the assignments page. So to get to the assignments page, you can see from the toolbar across the top of my section, assignments right here. This is the way I like to access this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. There we go. And now this is the view that I want to see in order to, I can actually do a lot of things here, but this is where I can really start to customize. So this is what I really like to think of as my teacher dashboard, really. I think this is where I'd spend the most time uh, in my classroom, where I can actually see all of the content that is included in my course immediately. You can see here that all of my content is listed by modules. If I expand a module, I can see all of the lessons inside of the module. And if I expand a lesson, I can see all of the activities inside of that lesson. So all of those exercises that you do with your students. And so remember that structure because that's important when we start to customize some things. So again, it's module, lesson, and the activities inside of the lesson. I'll go ahead and close those back up. So there's a few basic things that we can do with this, first of all. This right now is the Intro to CS and JavaScript course. This is exactly as I imported it or brought it in when I set up this course. So this is exactly like uh, we actually laid it out or like our curriculum developers laid it out for us. Now, if I want, I can absolutely come in here and actually just move around some of these modules. Let's say I want all of my challenges to be, be together. Right now I have Carol challenges in the second module. Those are all those extra challenge problems to really give our kids that extra, extra time uh, working through some of those Carol topics that they just learned. But then we also have JavaScript, JavaScript and graphics challenges a few modules below. So maybe I wanna move these around a little bit. I know my kids aren't ready for those, but maybe I'm going to shift this down. I can actually click on these three dots on the right hand side, and I can move this entire module up or down like this. And I can simply keep clicking it to decide where I want to put it. Now, there's an even easier way to do that. I can click on the edit button and I can drag this around. Oops. Maybe I can, it's having a little bit of a moment, probably because I'm on Zoom, but there we go. But you can absolutely drag that around. When you're done, you can click on done. And then that change sticks. Notice that is now in the third position. You can also move around some of the activities inside of the lessons. Now, keep in mind that if you are using a programming course, these are typically sequenced, so you may not want to move them around. There's some things that kids will need to learn before they move on to a lesson or an activity. But know that you can do that. You can move around lessons or you can move around the activities themselves. You can even move these activities to a different lesson. So if I want Racing Carol to go to a different lesson, I can decide where I want to add that to. And again, I'm doing that all from these three dots. If you're not sure where something is at, look for those three dots. I always think, where's all that other stuff, all those more options in the three dots. So I can move lessons around two, and I can even move those to other modules if I like. So you can do all of those kind of basic things like that. And let's say I've decided Maybe I don't want to include something in here. Maybe I'm going to take out this final exam. I don't need to have a final exam in this class. Maybe it's just a quarter long or it's an introductory course or some kind of exploratory course and I don't want a final. I can actually delete this entire final exam. I could delete just the exam. I could delete the entire lesson or I can delete the entire module as well. Keep in mind, this is a folder structure. So if you delete, the entire module, it's going to delete every lesson inside of it, as well as all the activities inside of those lessons. I'll go ahead and delete this. So again, I'm coming to the three dots on the right-hand side, and I'm going to click remove. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There you go. So again, the three dots under organize, I can click on remove. And when I click that, let me zoom back out so you can see what happens says, are you sure? Because we always want to be sure before we delete something, right? We got this big red button. 
yes, I'm going to delete it. Now, if you're like me and sometimes you think, yes, I want to delete that. And three seconds later, you think, oh, no, I didn't want to delete that. Now what? No worries. Just like with so many other things in computing, deleting something does not necessarily mean it's gone. I can always scroll back up to the top, click on course settings right up here in the right hand corner. And from here, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because it's very small on my screen. I'm going to see trash. You have a trash can for your course. I can view all of the assignments that I've removed and I can restore them. So now I can click on view trash. And you can see I already deleted something out of here, but what I deleted was this final exam module. I'm going to click restore and now I can view it. And you'll see that what it does is it puts it right back in the exact same spot that it deleted it from. And there it is, just like we didn't delete it. And by the way, Lindsay is tossing some really helpful links into chat. Um, so if you're thinking, oh, Lori, I'm not going to remember where that is. Lindsay did throw an awesome help article in there for removing content. All right. I'm going to jump back to my slides for just a moment, make sure I don't miss any of the good stuff I want to show you. We talked about how to restore that deleted content. You can even see a little GIF here uh, to see where that is. Now, I want to show you some of the really powerful pieces that you can do here. I want to show you how to add some additional content into our CodeHS courses. One of the things that we often find is that teachers don't realize there is supplemental content available for pretty much every course. I don't even know if there's a course that doesn't have supplemental content, actually. But the supplemental content is just that. It's content that doesn't get added into your course when you first create your course. It's extra content that you can add in. Maybe you need to provide scaffolding or some sort of support for your students. So you need a little bit more activity for that. Maybe you need to provide more challenging uh, material for some of your students as well. The supplemental content is gonna be great for that. So I'm gonna show you where that's at. I'm gonna head back out to, not that, here we go, to our assignments page again. So here's this assignments page. Again, we're staying right there. And I'm gonna show you this amazing blue button at the top right of this whole assignments list. This is the best button in all of Code HS, I think. So if I click on add, it's going to give me a drop down. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit, make sure we can all see that. So when I click add, I see quite a few different things here. Um, I'm gonna show you in just a moment how, what these blank um, items are, but I'm gonna jump down to existing first. So under existing, I can add a few different things and I'm gonna take us to Code HS course. Okay, so again, I clicked on add. And I'm going to go down to existing and click Code HS course. Zoom back out. There we go. And now this opens up this really nice little wizard, basically, where we can browse through the entire Code HS course catalog. Now, this is available for free teachers as well. You all have access to this too. We all know that all the Code HS curriculum is free. And uh, so everybody does have the capability to do this. So I can scroll through here and look at, um, gosh, I don't know, I think some of our hundred classes now is what we're up to. Or if I know what I'm wanting to find, I can always type it here too. So I can search for a course by simply starting to type. Maybe I want uh, a cybersecurity course and that will start bringing up those cyber courses. If I wanna see, uh, the supplemental material for Intro to Computer Science and JavaScript. It's the very first course that's listed, so I'm going to go ahead and click it. Now, it shows me all of the modules, all of the lessons, everything that gets pulled in when you build that course. But if I keep scrolling down, I'm going to see all of the supplemental modules. So if you haven't seen these before, definitely check them out. Um, check them out for JavaScript, Python, Java, cybersecurity, everything. There is so much supplemental content. 
I'm a big fan of the extra Carol practice, the puzzles. Um, I don't actually know what I'm not a fan of in this. Um, these are all the things that I've had a good time with. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at the extra Carol puzzles. Notice I can click this to select everything in it. Some of these might have a few more lessons than others. Let me find one that does. There we go. So more graphics and animations. Ah, Fun Snake. I have, I, you know, Fun Snake. There were times when I thought less than fun, but now that I've actually gotten through it, I love Fun Snake. This is a great project that will really challenge your kids, but you can choose all of them or just one of them even. And so you have um, a lot of ways to customize that supplemental uh, content that you're going to pull in. So once I do that and check the ones I want, I can click on Assign Selected. And my assignments have been added to the course. Then I can view these assignments. And the way it works is it's going to move those to, down to the very bottom of your course content. And so that's why it's going to be really important. We now know how we can move those around. So if you need to have those in a different spot, you can absolutely shift those up if you like or down wherever you want to put those. Now, the other items that you can add here, you can add that supplemental content, but you might have been thinking, well, Lori, it looked like I can add other stuff. You sure can. So if I click on add and click on Code HS course, notice it shows me every single course here. My course that's currently, or my content that's currently in my course is intro to CS and JavaScript. So what if I want some cybersecurity in this? I really need to get my kids uh, experience with uh, cybersecurity concepts, maybe some digital uh, citizenship, digi digital, that's a lot harder to say than you'd think, little digital citizenship or cyber hygiene. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and find my fundamentals of cybersecurity. And now I can add any of the content from this course as well. So I can absolutely create the course that I would like. So much like how I chose those supplemental modules, I can come in, go to any course that I want. Maybe I want to take a look at these cyber lessons. Notice I can see everything here. And maybe I want to add, let's see, we're going to do an overview of cybersecurity and what is cyber. Maybe I want to do a little digital citizenship too. I know I want to talk to my kids about digital footprint and reputation and cyberbullying and internet safety. I'm going to select those and assign them. And now I'm going to view these in my course. And again, they'll put them right at the bottom. And there they are. And those are fabulous modules to actually add wherever you'd like. So super easy to add those kind of uh, courses or those kind that kind of content directly into your course. And you can truly build the course that you want for your students. So I have a few slides for those uh, for that information here. Now I also want to show you just really quickly because I had a couple other really cool things to do before we run out of time today. So when I come back over to my assignments page, I want to click on that add button again. I want to show you the Code HS project button here too, because this is so cool. Lindsay just did a webinar on this. So if you missed it, we can absolutely get you that recording. This is a brand new, it has that new code smell, I think, but this is a brand new project for Code HS. And this uh, project catalog actually curates all of our projects uh, that we have. Some are included in courses, some may not be included in courses. But this is going to be a great way to actually find those and uh, add those directly into your course. So let's see, you can see these by the, uh, you can see what uh, language they are in. So maybe I want tic-tac-toe. I can select that and I can view that in the course. Now, if you're thinking, well, I really need to check out those projects before I assign them. Absolutely. You can do that by coming into Code HS and from the panel on the left-hand side, you can click on Project Catalog to view all of those.
great way to sort through and decide what you want to add to your courses before you do that. One other item that is under this add button is sandbox program. If you create a ton of programs in your sandbox, you can assign those directly to your students from the assignments page. In fact, if I click this, you're going to see all of my sandbox programs. Some are better than others. You'll see I have a lot called new. I should probably delete those, <laughs> but I have a lot of programs here. And I can add any of those directly into my course and make it an assignment. So it's a great way to add sandbox programs without just having to give your kids the link and then keeping track of those. You can actually add those directly into your course. All of these things are available to free teachers as well. Now, I want to talk before we're done, I want to talk more about adding some other things like your own content to the courses as well. I think this is, you know, I keep saying, I think this might be my favorite. It's all my favorite. I, yeah, and Lindsay, thank you, Laura, you say that all the time, but I do. So this is, this truly is so powerful. All of us at Code HS understand that you as teachers all come to teaching and come to your students in your classroom with your own teaching toolboxes. You have apps that you love to use. You have content that you've created. We know how much time teachers spend creating their own content. We want you to be able to use that. Um, we want to provide you with tons of content ourselves, but we know that you still have things that you want to use as well. So we want to show you how to do that. So I'm going to leave these slides again and come back to my assignments page. And from here, um, I'm going to come back up to this add button. Notice we keep coming back to the add button. If you forget, how do I customize? Just remember, Lori said, go to the assignments page and the add button. Now, this might be where you might want to create your own module. So if I want to create my very own module, maybe I want to create a welcome to class module. I can click on add, click module. Now I'm going to make a title for my module. I'm going to say, let's see, class resources. Now, if I wanted, I could absolutely choose an image here to, uh, to include in my uh, course or include in my class content. Um, this is actually a great way to organize everything. And if you're thinking, how do I find those cool little badges? Well, you can use any, you can create those on your own or you can even go and snag those directly from the course catalog too and use those in your own way. And that's fine. I'm going to click on create. It adds it to the bottom. I can move that up. Or now I can come in here and I can start adding the rest of the content. So I've got a module or that unit. Now I need a lesson. I'm going to call this new lesson. You might want to call that something different, but that works for now. And I can always rename it later. And now I'm going to create my first assignment. And this is really where I can start adding my own content. And notice now I'm just clicking on those links inside of that module. That's a really easy way to get that exactly where you need it to be. Now, when I create my own assignment type, you'll see I've got so many different options here. I can create my own coding exercise. This is going to be a sandbox style coding problem. Um, but it's going to be very open-ended. You don't even have to create a sandbox problem. So if you want your kids to do something creative and open-ended, this is a great option for them. Quiz, you can create all of your own quizzes here. So if you've got quizzes that you use, you can absolutely add those into the platform by creating your own quizzes. Practice problems, this is really great. And I'm not even going to pretend that I can write a great auto-graded practice problem. They take a little bit of practice. Um, Lindsay might be doing more about those some other time. She is great at auto-graded practice problems. Um, but this is a great way to make your own problems. You can even embed your own videos. So if you've got resources from other websites or YouTube or other sites, this is a great way to embed those videos. Or if you make your own screencasts for your students, this is a great way to include those in your course. Article, um, I'll show you in a second what you can do with that. Notes, this is a great way to actually write your own notes into your lessons and uh, format it. 
free response. This is something I loved for uh, my own classes or uh, what I've also told other people is a great way, a great thing to add to get some writing and brainstorming involved in your Code HS courses as well. I think it's a great option for journaling and actually including that directly in your Code HS course and embed. So I'm going to show you quickly what some of those look like. And I'm going to do article because this one is, there's a couple that are really extra flexible that we want to make sure you know about today. So I like to add my own articles in to Code HS. And you're probably thinking, oh, so I can add another website. And yes, yes, you sure can. You can absolutely include a link to a website here. Let's say there's even just a Wikipedia article you want to add, you can do that. But the other really great thing that you can add here is actually Google Docs. You can add a Google Doc link here. And I'm actually gonna take, I'm gonna be sneaky and just use my own slide deck. I just grabbed the URL. You could also go to the share link and that might be the better place to do it. I just didn't wanna interrupt everything. I'm gonna call this slides for now and I can give it a description. Let's see. Here's the slide deck. It's a terrible description, but that works for our purposes right now. Save and finish and preview. And look at how awesome that looks. This gets embedded directly in the course. Students do not have to go anyplace else to find this information. It's right here. And you can rearrange it the same way you can rearrange any other content. Now, some of the other things you can add, I'm gonna show you just a couple more. I also really like the embed option. So when I click on embed, this is gonna be a great way to take an embed code from a third party app or something that actually has an embed code feature. Um, and I think I have a Padlet pulled up and I wanna show you how you can use that. This works even if you have the free version of Padlet. So here is my Padlet. I'm going to click on my little share icon and I'm going to get embed, copy. I'm going to go back to, not that, this one. And right here, I'm going to paste to that whole embed code here. Now, when I save that and preview it, how cool is that? From here, students would be able to post on this Padlet. If they're not signed in, they can sign in here. Um, or if this is just simply open and anonymous, you can absolutely do that as well. And students can fill out their Padlet right here in the course. They do not have to go somewhere else to do that. I'm gonna close this for a second. And I wanted to show you too, how you can do this with a Google Form. So when I have my Google Form, I can click send. I can grab the embed code, copy it, come back to assignments, click on embed. And just like that, I just pasted it right in, preview it, same thing. It's embedded directly in the CodeHS platform. You can also do that with Flipgrid. If I've got any Flipgrid folks, you can do that. Also, sometimes if you have issues and you can't find an embed code, no worries, because you can always try the link as well. Um, so if I jump back over here real quick, not there. Yeah, there. Okay, getting too many tabs open. Oops. Oh yeah, that works. We'll go to article. I'm gonna paste that. Let's see if that one works. Now I'm doubting myself. I was thinking it worked. Let's see what happens. And there we go. And that added the Flipgrid with the URL. So remember, I just used the article type for that. So if you have something that you'd like to use, but there's no embed code, try the URL. That's always a really good option too. Ah, oh, let's see. Let's see what else I forgot. I'm certain there's something because I get too excited about all of the stuff. One thing, one last thing. So pretty much everything that we've been showing you has all been free uh, tools that any teacher can use. 
Forking quizzes is an option that pro teachers have as well. I'm going to give you just a quick look at this. I can close that. So sometimes we might be thinking, man, I wish I could take that Code HS quiz and copy it or edit it. And guess what? You can. So any of the Code HS quizzes for pro teachers are able to be forked or copied. So I'm going to find the check for understanding quiz here, click on these three dots and click fork. It's going to say, are you sure? I sure am. And now I have a second copy. This copy is all my own. And at this point, I can absolutely come in. I can edit this. I can change the questions. I can add more questions and save this and make a brand new copy. So that is another great option. And actually, at this point, any assignment in the Code HS realm can be forked as well for pro teachers. So I can even make a copy of Tennis Ball Square, make a tower, Pyramid of Carol, anything. So that, again, is a pro tool. Teachers, do not fret if you are not a pro teacher because you can still make a brand new assignment that is a quiz. And this is this was not available when I was in the classroom, and I would have loved this. You can absolutely create your own quizzes here with multiple choice options. And if you happen to know Markdown, which if you're thinking, Lori, I don't know what that is, promise we don't have time today, but definitely send me an email because I can help you out with some resources for that. It's a great way to format your quiz questions. But you can definitely create your own questions here and create your own quizzes. All right. So I had, that was a ton of information in a very short amount of time. And frankly, I'm shocked that I only went that much over. But just checking to see if we have any questions. If you do have any remaining questions, go ahead and you can drop those into the q and I'll give you a moment. Hey, Rudy, just saw your message. Appreciate you coming today. All right. And otherwise, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are always here to help. Um, and there is always uh, that easy, awesome option to get in touch with support directly in the platform as well. You can always access support from this panel on the left-hand side of your screen. And they are very fast. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out. So check out many of the workshops that are coming up. We have a ton more webinars coming up next week. Yes, next week, we have easy ways to grade and provide feedback on Code HS Pro. You do not want to miss that one. And if we've got some CSP teachers out here, you definitely want to tune in to our AP CSP course checklist on Wednesday. To see that whole list, you're going to want to browse to codehs.com slash free PD. Lindsay has tossed that into the chat. And we've got many more resources for you. Lindsay tossed all of them into chat. There's so many. Um, you will all be getting a follow-up, so don't worry about trying to copy those. Um, but definitely check out our other resources as well. And if you want to learn more information, visit codehs.com slash learn more. And that is going to wrap up our webinar for today. I want to thank you again on behalf of both Lindsay, myself, and everybody here at Code HS. Thank you so much for attending today. We are so glad you took some time out of your day to spend a little bit of time with us to learn a little more about Code HS. Again, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We are always here to help. Thank you so much for coming, and we cannot wait to see you at the next Code HS webinar or workshop. See you all soon, everybody.